In this video, we will learn about change in linear and exponential functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.2. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. In Topic 2.1, we learned that arithmetic sequences behave like linear functions and that geometric sequences behave like exponential functions. Let's look more closely at these connections today. Example 1. Selected values of several functions are given in the table below. For each table, determine if the function could be linear, exponential, or neither. Give a reason for your answer. Linear functions have a constant rate of change. For equal changes in the input, you get equal changes of the output, a common difference. On the other hand, exponential functions have a constant percentage change. For equal changes in the input, you get proportional changes in the output, a common ratio. Part A. Let's start by making sure we are looking at equal changes in the input. We do. Successive terms are increasing by 3. Now, let's check and see if f of x is linear by seeing if we have a constant change in the output. We do. Each successive output value decreases by 2. Here's the justification the College Board is looking for. f of x is linear because over equal length input value intervals, the output values change at a constant rate. For Part B, we again see equal length input value intervals. Let's check for a common difference. Nope, the output values are not changing at a constant rate. To determine whether g of x is exponential, we look for a common ratio. That's each term divided by the previous term. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 9 divided by 4 is 9 fourths. And 16 divided by 9 is 16 ninths. So, g of x is not exponential. We do not see a common ratio. For full credit, your justification needs to sound like this. f of x is neither linear nor exponential because over equal length input value intervals, the output values neither change at a constant rate nor change proportionally. In each case, I want you to begin by talking about equal length input value intervals. Then the function will be linear if the output values change at a constant rate and the function will be exponential if the output values change proportionally. Notice that for part C, we again have equal length input value intervals. If h of x is linear, the output values will change at a constant rate. In other words, we will see a common difference. The output values do not change at a constant rate, so h of x is not linear. If h of x is exponential, the output values should change proportionally. In other words, we should see a common ratio. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 16 divided by 8 is 2. So the output values are changing proportionally with a common ratio of 2. Phrase your justification exactly like this h of x is exponential because over equal length input value intervals, the output values change proportionally. By the way, I just noticed that on part b, the function was g of x and I said f of x. That would lose me a point on the AP exam, so let's fix that. For part d, we do have equal length input value intervals. So if k of x is linear, we will see a constant rate of change between the output values. The output values do not change at a constant rate, so k of x is not linear. If k of x is exponential, the output values will change proportionally. In other words, there will be a common ratio. 40 divided by 80 is 1 half. 20 divided by 40, again, 1 half. 10 divided by 20 is 1 half and 5 divided by 10 is 1 half. So, k of x is exponential because over equal length input value intervals, 
the output values change proportionally. Example 2. A wild rumor is spreading that Mr. Passwater won third place in the world's strongest man contest. The number of people that have heard the rumor can be modeled using a geometric sequence where 43 people have heard the rumor on day 3 and 140 people have heard the rumor on day 6. According to the model, how many people to the nearest whole number have heard the rumor by day 10? In topic 2.1, we learned that a geometric sequence can be modeled by the equation gn equals gk times r to the n minus k power, where gn is the nth term of the geometric sequence, gk is term k, and r is the common ratio. 43 people had heard the rumor on day 3. That means g3 is equal to 43. 140 people have heard the rumor on day 6. That means g6 is equal to 140. We can use these two terms to find the common ratio r. Let's put g6 in for gn and g3 in for gk. I always let the larger index term be gn. n minus k will be 6 minus 3, which is 3. g6 is 140, so we have 140 is equal to g3 is 43. And then we have r to the third power. Let's divide both sides by 43. It looks ugly, but we have 140 over 43 equals r to the third power. To get r by itself, we need to raise both sides of this equation to the one-third power. Look, if we raise r to the third power to the one-third power, a power to a power, you multiply, and the three and the one-third end up canceling each other out. So when we raise both sides of this equation to the one-third power, we end up with 140 over 43 to the one-third power is equal to r. We have found the common ratio. Now we can write the model for the geometric sequence. gn equals, and let's still let gk be g3. But now we know r. So let's put in 140 over 43 to the one-third power. But then this must be raised to the n minus k power. That is the n minus 3 power. Remember that g3 is 43. And when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. One-third times n minus 3 could be written as n minus 3 over 3. So this is the formula. We can use this model to figure out how many people have heard the rumor by day 10. That will be G10. G10 will equal 43 times 140 over 43 to the 10 minus 3 over 3 power. 10 minus 3 is 7, so this will be the 7 over 3 power. Just type it in your calculator like this and hit enter. And there it is. So, 676 people have heard the rumor by day 10. Example 3. A large theater has rows of seats where the number of seats in each row can be modeled by an arithmetic sequence. If the 5th row has 31 seats and the 11th row has 49 seats, determine how many seats there are in the 25th row. In topic 2.1, we learned that an arithmetic sequence can be modeled by the equation an equals ak plus d times n minus k, where an is the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, ak is term k, and d is the common difference. If the fifth row has 31 seats, that means a5 is 31. If the 11th row has 49 seats, that means a11 equals 49. We can use these two terms to find the common difference d. Let's put a11 in for an and a5 in for ak. Always put the larger index in the front as an. So now we have this, 
and the n minus k is 11 minus 5, which is 6. a11 is 49, so we write 49 equals a5 is 31, and then this is 6d. Subtracting 31 from both sides, we get 18. 18 equals 6d. Dividing both sides by 6, and we get d equals 3. Now that we know the common difference, we can write the arithmetic model. a n equals a k. Let's continue with a 5 right here. Plus, now we know the common difference is 3. And n minus k becomes n minus 5. A5 is 31. So the rule is a n is equal to 31 plus 3 times n minus 5. This model will give us the number of seats in any row, including the 25th row. That will be a25, which will equal 31 plus 3 times 25 minus 5. So a25 will equal 31 plus 3 times 20. So a25 equals 31 plus 60, which equals 91. According to the model, there are 91 seats in row 25. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.